Hello crew, today we are going to do a quick review of Le Chatelier's principle, however you say it. And I want to invoke the reaction quotient into this as well, just because I think it can be useful to understand how both operate and how they can actually tell you identical information. So I'm mostly just going to be talking and drawing about this particular reaction. So I have the decomposition of ammonia. Also, as a matter of interest, and it'll be actually kind of useful to us, I've written up the enthalpy of reaction uh, as written for this. I'm fairly certain that's at standard conditions when I pulled that number. And you can see since delta H is positive that this is actually endothermic as written. And so this will be useful later on to at least know that heat is going to be on the left hand side we'd have to put energy in to cause the decomposition of ammonia. I've also given as a point of reference the equilibrium constant at 293 Kelvin. And if I were to write up the expression for this I could say that Kc is going to be equal to and then you have your products so N2 and H2 is also a product. Notice the 3 there, we only have a 1, so I have a implied 1 as the exponent of the nitrogen, but that hydrogen there has to get its 3 up there, so it's actually cubed. My lone reactant is ammonia and H3, although the stoichiometry says that two of them are involved in this reaction, and so I have to have my square there. If you recall, the reaction quotient is going to have an identical expression associated with it and it does have a lot of usefulness. It's not just totally redundant. What it does, it is it allows us to have concentrations of these species when it is not at equilibrium. So this is something that you would go and you look up in a book or in a table and I've got one listed for you right there. Q can have any value at once or at least any positive value. But when you're thinking about an equilibrium reaction, if Q is not equal to Kc, then Q is trying to become Kc. And so it's shifting. The concentrations of those reactants are going to change until Q is equal to Kc. And when that happens, Kc is equal to Q. This happens at equilibrium. So let's initially start talking about some of the simpler things. Let's say that I'm attempting to decompose my ammonia. Let's look at our actual value here of Kc. Notice that it's very, very small. If Kc is very, very small, then that means that this is very, very large relative to the numerator. That means that if I just put a whole bunch of ammonia in a bucket at 293 degrees Kelvin, that it's not going to decompose very readily. So I will have very small concentrations of these products. What's useful and what makes sense is that I could say, well, what if I heated this all up? Treat heat as if it were a reactant and let the amount of heat go up. So now you're putting in energy. Intuitively, hopefully you understand that if I'm putting in a bunch of energy into an endothermic reaction, that's going to cause this to move that way, meaning I'm going to actually start to decompose my ammonia. Now, I'm starting with this one for a reason because it's a little bit of an exception and I want to get it out of the way. It is super important to remember that Kc, the equilibrium constant, is actually a function of temperature. So it has a different value. In our particular case, we can use a combination of Le Chatelier and some of our thermo information to predict what direction the equilibrium constant is going to go. It turns out that the equilibrium constant for this reaction is going to go up. It's going to increase. It's going to become a larger number. So as heat goes up, Kc will also increase. And then coming back to the equation, the reason why hopefully that should make sense is that if I'm going to start to decompose the ammonia, the NH3, the reaction tells me that I'm going to start growing my numerator. So I'm shifting from here up. That's going to cause the Kc to actually change. It is an equilibrium constant, but remember when you are changing temperature, when you were dealing with the heat component over here, it is going to change the Kc. We do not really need to invoke 
cue for this discussion right now. And like I said, this is a little bit of the oddball, and I wanted to start with it. Likewise, if I were to decrease the temperature, that's removing one of these reactants, and our principle says that we are removing a stress here, which means that we should expect a shift that is going to go to the left. So hopefully that's going to be a little bit more clear as we start to talk about some of these other reactants and products as well. So that was us talking about temperature and how it can affect the equilibrium concentrations on a reversible reaction. Now let's go and let's talk about something that's going to be isothermal, constant temperature. But we're going to take some of these things here, some of these reactants and products, and we're going to start adjusting them. So Le Chatelier's principle says that if I were to add a stress on the system, then the system is going to shift away from that stress. If I, for example, were to plug more nitrogen gas into a chamber, it's going to cause the reaction to shift away. So you're going to shift towards the reactants in this case. Now is when I want to come in and invoke Q. Remember, Q is always trying to become KC. So if you come up with a thought experiment where you have everything at equilibrium, and then I artificially increase in two, now you are out of equilibrium. Now Q is no longer equal to KC, however it is going to try to get there. So in this particular case, increasing in two alone initially makes Q too large. And if Q is too large, it needs to get smaller. And how do you make something smaller? You need to make the denominator larger, and you need to make the numerator smaller. And if you look at what that means, that means you're going to be shifting some quantity from up here down, which is actually the identical thing that I've just put up here from the principle itself that says this reaction is going to shift to the left. Let's go ahead and just kind of talk about this in a quicker way, in a more general way. And you can just kind of see the way that this stuff works. So again, concentrations of things. It's easy to look at the principle and say, well, uh, what if I remove H2? You're removing a stress from the right. That means things are going to fill in over here. So this reaction is going to proceed towards the right. What if I remove some of the ammonia? Well, then there's going to be some recombination of these guys, and it's going to shift to the left. You've removed a stress. Remember, you can still treat heat, just like we were saying, as a reactant or a product if it were a different reaction. I'm removing a stress there. That's going to cause this reaction to shift to the left. Just remember that if you are dealing with temperature, the thing that you're truly adjusting is the equilibrium constant, not just trying to hit a new Q value and shift back to the original KC. It's different. Often for these gas phase reactions, people like to talk about, well, what would happen if you altered the pressure? What's important is to look at the total number of moles of gas we have two moles of gas over here, and in total we have four moles over here. That's the three plus the one for the nitrogen. Think of pressure as a stress also. So that could either be increasing or decreasing the volume of the chamber. You could just be adding more of your reactants or things like that. But if I go to a higher pressure, your reaction is going to want to shift away from the greater number of moles. If I lower the pressure, so now pressure has gone down, I'm going to actually fill in where I have more moles. That one for me is a little less intuitive. I prefer the first version, shifting away from greater moles when pressure goes up. So pressure going up, remember, would be something like volume going down. But I, I want to make sure you can understand this through the Q value as well. So let's go back to our original situation where we say, hey, what if the pressure is going up? In fact, let's say that the pressure went up by a factor of 2. Whatever all of these values were previously, now they are all going to be multiplied by a 2. And if you look carefully, you'll see a 2 multiplier in there on the nitrogen. You've got a 2 for the hydrogen, but it's being cubed. And then down here, you have a 2 for the ammonia, and it's only being squared. Those two are going to cancel two of them up here, 
and you will see that I have a net influence where I actually have a four up top compared to a one on the bottom. So now all of a sudden Q is too large, a four in the numerator compared to a one in the bottom. That tells me that I need to do this shift. I need to start shifting some concentration from the numerator down into the denominator. So I'm shifting away from those products over here and I'm shifting this way. Again, that's the exact same thing that we just kind of qualitatively saw from Le Chatelier's principle. The very last thing I want to say is something about a catalyst. Let's briefly go look at one of these red ammonia. Let's say we're actually decomposing it, so it's going to start up here and it's going to go down. Nitrogen, I'll have it start here and it's going to slightly go up. Hydrogen, let's have it starting way down here. It's got to go up three for every one of the nitrogen. When you put a catalyst into a reaction, it's important to remember that it does not influence the K value at all. What it does is it speeds up a reaction. So it causes you to get to the equilibrium positions faster. So with a catalyst, this guy would have shot up very quickly, then come over to its equilibrium concentration. The nitrogen would have done the same very quickly than its equilibrium concentration. And the ammonia would have shot down very quickly then to its equilibrium concentration. So the only thing that's really changing with that catalyst is that things happen very rapidly. And so it takes much less time to reach equilibrium compared to without a catalyst. So hopefully that was a decent refresher for you for Le Chatelier's principle and using the reaction quotient. If that made sense to you, you should certainly let your computer know.